three, two, one. All right, we're live here in 10th Planet. I got the one and only Coach Casey Halstead with me. This is unprecedented times, it goes without saying. We're in the middle of the coronavirus and Coach has recently announced that he's not only gonna be closing the gym for a little while, but also uh, taking the proper precautions. It's kind of wild, Coach. It's just, it's, it's you know, amazing to see all the people kind of band together and support uh, not only what the gym's doing, but also everything in the community. Man, uh, the, the support from the jiu-jitsu community is, is insane right now. You know, we're, we're asking a lot of, of everybody to try to help each other, you know, and, and uh, especially our students here at 10th Planet. I mean, I feel like we've gotten closer and we're taking care of each other's needs. You know, we, we've done a lot of things, uh, doing online courses, closed group courses, even people from Orange County Tyler Wombles is going to be doing a kickboxing class twice a week for, for our closed group, for everybody that's a member here. Uh, it's just pretty cool to see. Now, people are going to still train, Coach. There's still going to be a degree of training. Um, you're offering some stuff that's going to be on YouTube coming up and already have put some stuff on there. Uh, I know you're active in that and you're going to be proactive in putting stuff out there and you're going to be slowly potentially bringing in uh, people to do one-on-ones as long as they don't possess symptoms and doing, um, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, uh, uh, privates, yep. private lessons. So that's going to be something that's on your radar to make sure people are still getting their training, at least at a minimum, and spending the time. I know um, something you're really aware of, making sure there's no symptoms, the gym maintains its cleanliness, everybody is on top of their game. And even if you're in here, guys, and you got a chance to see, Coach has got the mats, he's cleaning everything out, he's making sure everything stays on point. It's it's a wild time, and I know a lot of your students probably have a lot of questions and things are swirling around in their head as to what's going to happen. You've done a fantastic job banding not just the community, but your students in this community together to kind of really come together and be a support structure for them. I know you're on the phone 24 hours a day texting, talking to a lot of them, keeping them calm, and you're letting them know anything that they need, they can reach out to you, which is huge, which not every coach does. Is that something that just comes naturally to you? Yeah, you know, I think um, in, in my life, I've, I've had like four really significant life events where when pressed against them, I could have gone either down or I could have changed my trajectory and gone up. And so just my personal philosophy is anytime you're put against something and you don't know which way it's going to go, I just make a decision to be as positive as I can and positioning is key. And that's always kind of how I've lived my life, positioning, positioning. I'm always looking like, okay, it sucks now, but what's going to look like if this clears up? And so I'm always adjusting for that it's going to get better. You know, taking precautions in case Mm -hmm. it doesn't, but positioning myself for when it does. And the message that I've been preaching to the students is one of, you know, we're forced to be at home right now. They're shutting down training. Okay, so what can we do? We can move to the internet. We're, we live in an amazing time where we could reach people without actually having to touch people. And so one of the things is like we're organizing hikes. So we're going to start going to Gold Strike, small groups. Even if 20 people show up, we'll just go groups of five yep, and man. then leave a few Social minutes distance, behind. Man. Social distance. And, I, you know, I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I also agree to a certain extent with herd immunity. But here in the United States, our infrastructure is not set up for everyone getting sick at once. So even though I agree with herd immunity, I also agree with we need to just slow this down so we could re- ramp up our medical system and our you know infrastructure to be able to accommodate everybody getting sick. And so many people rely on training as a whole for their own mental state, right? That goes without saying, maintaining a positive outlook, just having that outlet. And part of the reason why I was so excited to come in here and do this with you wasn't just because it's you and it's fun to get out with the guys. It's a way to commune a little bit and not be in a large setting. There's three of us in here right now. It's not, you know, we don't have a group of 20, but we're at least getting the opportunity to see people face to face and talk live. And I think that's something that is really important and still having that sense of community. And that's something you can do, as you said, through the internet, through those things. And before we get to the fun stuff, 
and the preparation and kind of how to prepare for things like this. We're in an unprecedented time. There's no way to, there was no way to really prepare for this per se. And people are overreacting a bit. They're, you know, running to the store. I was joking the other day with one of the largest grocery chains in Manhattan, the owner, and on my podcast, you know, it's like we could do a whole segment on toilet paper alone. Why toilet paper? You know what I mean? Of all things, why toilet paper? So there is that overreaction. And we see that even in this community where people are like, what am I going to do? I can't train. Well, you can train, you know, you can still have the opportunity to train and you're going to build in some of those things you mentioned online, you mentioned training at home, you mentioned utilizing some of the great, great stuff we have available and even potentially bringing in, you know, uh, uh, one on ones, which will be huge. And I think that's necessary. I think you still have to have that sense of community. Now, where have you seen kind of the overreaction in the community and what are you doing to kind of calm guys down and keep them relaxed and let them know that they're still still opportunity to get out and, and train. Yeah, if, so obviously, I mean, the overreaction, it's everybody snatching up everything and trying to be- Ahead of it. Ahead of it, right? And so like one of, the, one of the things that I'm really preaching, I just released a YouTube video about this specific thing, is you know, we're a people that were raised where product, productivity is king, right? If you're not productive as a human, you're just, you're nothing, right? So then all of a sudden we have this mandate shut down and we have a bunch of people that are at home and they're not being productive. So there's actually a couple of things going on. There's the fear that there's not gonna be enough food and that there's some sort of apocalypse happening. happening. And then there's the emotional stress of not being a productive human, right? And so how do we manage those two fears? And they're coming from different places. Mm -hmm. One's like a real physical threat and the other one's an emotional threat. You know, we know there's a ton of people that suffer from mental illness in this country and now they're isolated in their homes and that's never a good thing. So pretty much my message is this, if there's someone that you've been meaning to talk to that you haven't talked to, FaceTime them, reach out to them. Now's a great time. Yeah. Now's a good time. Also, how about just reinvesting some time into your loved ones that are at home living in your house? If you have a wife or a husband, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, a kid, Go connect. And, and we were talking about this earlier, and it's, it's, it's totally an amazing point. We spent almost half the night talking about it. I know you talked about it with your guys. It's a great time to get organized. Get your oh, yeah. house together. Get your, your everything together that you've been meaning to work on for a really long time. So I think you can chew up a lot of time. And I believe that in the next... You know, the, the, the president released, you know, his 14 days or so, 15 day uh, protocol that he wanted people to follow. I think in the next 15 days, we're going to kind of start to come out of this with the stimulus package mm -hmm. and the news cycle only chews up so much. Yep. And it's more about adjusting that curve, as they keep saying. They don't want to see the, the hospital beds overwhelmed. They don't want to see uh, people putting themselves in bad situations because we've seen a lot of athletes come down with it, high profile athletes, because they're in that setting where they're constantly exposed to other people and it's just limiting that but now is a great time to get your arms around all the things that you've been trying to get your arms around for a really long time and you bring out bring up reaching out to people it's a fantastic time to reach out to people and have a conversation maybe you haven't maybe it's a loved one you haven't talked to in a long time maybe it's it's somebody that you just want to say hi to that you haven't reached out to because now people are in their home they're in their house they're in their head and now's a good time to get out of your head and spend some time and take take a walk clear your head there's a park everywhere parks yep. are free Go walk a park, go take some time. And I noticed a lot of people have been even buying dogs and, and stuff like that because they're going to be at home. And pets are a great way to, to pets can't catch Corona. So they, they brought that out. But a lot of people have been buying pets. I noticed that. But it's a perfect time to do a lot of the things that help you get organized. Now, more, you know, importantly, the preparation, which we talked about now, learning from this and taking something out of this, all as a business owner too, as a guy who owns a gym, this is a huge one. What steps or advice would you give anyone? Because you're a squared away guy. To everybody out there listening, Coach is a, is a very squared away guy. He has his finger on the pulse and he runs his business properly. How? What advice would you give guys out there that are struggling or maybe trying to piece it together and maybe they're just a, a, a mat and, and a prayer you know what advice would you give them well so it's funny that you bring that up because I you know I have many businesses and I'm always the kind of guy that mostly the reason I create business is because I fall in love with my students right so we had one gym I fell in love with some of my students and I was like man these are really good kids let me open another gym 
And then that way I can bring them in in some sort of partnership. And then from there we move on and we just keep doing this and I keep replicating, rinse mm -hmm. and repeat. And everyone that works with me is pissed at me chronically. It never ends. Oh, we need to release more funds. We need to get paid more. We need to, you know, why are we sitting on so much cash? And for me, I never thought it was going to be a, a pandemic that was going to cause us to do the, to adjust and have to, you know. Right. But I'm always with uh, I'm always making sure that we have a reserve so we can get through hard times. But I always thought it was going to be some political issue or or maybe something crazy in the gym that happened that we would have to be able to stay open while we pivoted and made an adjustment or the jujitsu industry was a bubble and it popped and I wanted to be able to cut the partners, you know, a nice amount of money on the, on the exit. And so it turns out now that, uh, it's this thing for shutdown from the governor and from the president. And so now we have no choice, but to, you know, cease and desist until we're told that we can't open again. And, uh, so the, the advice I would give to a business owner is you can never use your business as your bank account. That's not how it works. The business needs to be lucrative and profitable and make the business wealthy. And then from the business becoming wealthy, you extract money out of the business. And then when you're ready, you know, as like in form of like salary or pay, and then when you're ready to sell the business, that's where you extract the wealth. And then that's how you make your money. But I think way too many business owners use their bank account from their business as their own personal bank account and the their life bank. yeah and their lifestyle keeps adjusting as their business grows so that's why a lot of people don't have a month of savings they don't have a month of operations for their businesses when these happen i mean there's tons of restaurants in this town that are going to not exist even when we open back up for business they're just not going to make it and it's because people want to have eight hundred thousand dollar homes and they want to drive seventy five thousand dollar vehicles and you know, they want to be everywhere doing everything. And that's just never been my take on everything. I just want what we need. And it's about preparing for the unforeseen. So exactly. when you have this opportunity come up, use it. Be productive. You're in here doing some renovations, cleaning, getting organized. Use the time properly to strengthen your gym, strengthen your community. Even though you can't get large groups together, you still have access to not only, potentially you hope, at least as a business owner, your email list, your correspondence list, you're able to still correspond with your students on a larger scale, as you said, through the internet and get a message out there. Um, I think, you know, a lot of coaches don't look at the bright side or the flip side of it in terms of what they can do. And you'll find more often than not, now we can't guarantee students are going to pay for six months, but 30 days, 60 days isn't that much to ask to band together as a family and support the things that people are doing and try to get this to the next level. But I, I think we're going to come out of this in the next two weeks. I think a lot of it's going to shake out and figure itself out, especially with the stimulus package that just came through. And I think we'll see some of those changes take place and people will get back to some semblance of normal because you'll have the ability to test. You'll have the ability. The fear was the spread, as you said, and the fear was that. Now, there's other ways people can prepare, and we've seen not only uh, runs on toilet paper, but food and everything else, and learn from it. In the future, you should maintain at least 30 to 60 days, even if you're living paycheck to paycheck. You can buy, we talked about this, you know, top ramen. You can buy stuff that can sustain you for 30 or 60 days, but everybody should have some level of preparation because you can't prepare for uh, um, what you can't see, but you can at least better to have something than nothing, you know? And, Absolutely. and I'd much rather be um, cautious and maintain that. Now, some guys that don't do that or even gym owners that don't prepare for stuff like this, it's scary to them because they're literally living paycheck to paycheck, month to month. But I feel like they don't insulate themselves from these types of situations doing the things that you said, which is so critical and so serious. Do you have any, any fear at all of this escalating to other things beyond toilet paper or where do you see it going? So, so for me to kind of like just what you recap, what you just went over real quick, positioning is what I'm always looking at, right? So like when this does blow over, which it will, your house can be in disarray because you were depressed and you were just moping and, or your house can be so dialed in that 100% of your focus can be on, uh, on, recovering and being a savage out trying to make your business run, right? So that's, I mean, that's the key takeaway here, right? Is always spend conservatively, 
create business aggressively and always think about positioning. And that's what I'm always doing right now. So I'm thinking, okay, I got this shut down now. I know that when the president releases us back to the work, the last thing I need to be doing is repairing my relationship with my wife and doing that and cleaning the garage Those and doing points. the honeydews. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna knock all that shit out now. So I'm literally, just imagine, imagine a wolf and there's a chain around its neck and there's a steak sitting there. That's me. Mm -hmm. I'm chomping, I'm salivating. I'm pulling on the chain, I'm pulling on the chain and I'm just waiting for them to say go to work because I got my shit so buttoned tight at home that I'm not gonna have to worry about any of that. My wife's gonna be like, go, release the hounds and we're hitting the ground running and we're gonna attack this thing on the other end. Uh, I would be, I'd be a fool if I sat up here and said, oh, it's gonna be a month, it's gonna be 90 days. I don't know. I'm prepared for the worst and I'm hoping for the best. And so like all I know, what I can control now is my attitude and my actions today. That's it. I am a little worried about looting and rioting just because everybody is going to the store and buying everything. Mm -hmm. It's like how much is enough? You know, people are buying 1,200 rolls of toilet paper for one house. That's just bananas. Eventually, people are going to have to start knocking on doors. They're going to have to knock on doors to feed their kids, and I don't blame them. You know, like... If my kids were going hungry, I'm going to do whatever I have to do to get food for them. That's a fact. And, and I told people, you know, that have asked me and I said, you know, you don't need to hit that, you know, that DEFCON 5 or whatever it is, that final alarm yet. They're still stocking shelves in grocery stores. So to, yeah. to every student, everybody listening out there, there's still stocking shelves. You still have drive throughs open. You still have the ability, you know, AG and I were fighting about this earlier. You still have the ability to go through a drive through at McDonald's. You still have the ability to get your coffee. Yeah. So, you know, don't, to everybody out there listening, it's not, you don't need to hit that crazy panic button. Right. You can still commune. You mentioned going on hikes. You can still do certain things. I was in uh, Home Depot yesterday. It was practically empty. I mean, yeah. they had everything in stock. It's available to you. So to everyone out there, yes, you should be slowly building your stockpiles of things. And this isn't about toilet paper, water, ammunition, whatever it is that you're focused on. And we will get to some things that I think make sense and maybe some things that you make sense. But it's not about running out and buying any one thing. Slowly build up your inventories of things. And listen, to everybody listening out there, it's inexpensive to people that are like, oh, it's easy for Coach to say he has the money. It's easy for John to say he might have the money or whoever else. You can go out and buy five pounds of pasta for five bucks. You can go out and buy, you know, Top Ramen, like you mentioned, I think it's, what, five ninety nine for 30 packs. You can go and buy those things to sustain life if it comes to that point. But there's no reason, in my opinion, and, and, and you can fill a duffel bag with literally 30 days worth of food very easily. Those things are doable. You can totally make those things happen. So to everybody out there listening, and we'll get into what I think everybody should have in preparation for this, which I know everyone's you know waiting for, and maybe what you think. But to me, there's no excuse for that. What do you say, Coach? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's you got to act responsibly, you know, and at the end of the day, you're going to need me. I'm going to need John. And so, like, if I'm literally barricading myself against the world, how long do you think you can last on your own? You can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can bug out and you can go do something. But unless you're capable, unless you can kill, unless you can run irrigation, unless you can fix it, uh, unless you're a diesel mechanic. You know, you're not going to be able to survive. Like, even even me, like, I, I need a guy like John. AG's another guy that comes to mind. You know, he we're out getting pigs right now. We're helping people out. You know, we're going to go out and kill a bunch of pigs. We got a butcher in town. He's going to butcher them for us. And we're going to give the meat to the people that need it. You yeah. know, I mean, and, and it's like, this is real shit. Like, community is always going to... Um, help more than the individual we're stronger together than we are apart. absolutely man and, and i think that i think that a lot of people are going about this wrong i'm building my squad right now i'm building it and and i'm just ashamed i mean we have our community our jiu-jitsu community right but we we're all dumb we all just like going through the motions every day thinking that there's always a silver lining and then all of a sudden this little crack in our universe happened and it made me made me pivot Right. And now I'm thinking like, okay, I got to make sure I got the right guys because I'm a capable guy. I don't, you know, I'm not the most versed in hunting in that yet. I will be. But you know what I am? I'm a workhorse. 
And anybody's gonna want a guy like me because I'll work 20 hours in a day and not complain. I'll just keep work. Oh, you need me to dig out a trench? I got it. Let's and go. now's a great time to re-examine that. If you're not skilled at something, it's a great time to re-examine and learn from that and develop that skill trait as you go forward and start to do some research into it. You still have the internet. You still have the ability to start to do that type of research. Now, I wanna get to the fun stuff that everybody may or may not uh, care about, but this is more, again, guys, this part is not tongue in cheek, but a little bit of fun. Everybody's been asking me, coach, you know, I need guns, I need ammunition, I need defensive stuff, I need all this stuff. So to everybody out there, you know, I've been giving everybody the same answer. You don't need thousands of rounds of ammunition. You don't need uh, 15 guns, you know. You have to build a little bit of a surplus of all the different things you need. And we talked about food, and we'll talk about training, and we'll talk about your business, but you don't need a gazillion different things. You just simply need to have what's necessary for you and your immediate family. So to everybody out there that's like, geez, you know, I need to go out and get a firearm. A lot of that is a derivative of looting, which you brought up, and looting is a scary thing. And the reason looting is a scary thing, it can take your business that you talked about insulating and compound it. You can't rely on just the police response for your business necessarily. If somebody throws a brick through the window, now you're lucky in a sense this being a jiu-jitsu gym, there's not a lot to take, but who knows three months from now, six months from now, people will need a place to sleep. This would be an ideal place because it's all mats. Yep. So that's something you have to worry about. So I understand everybody listening and even some students looting and things like that are the concern and that's a real concern of businesses but you don't necessarily need to run out right now and get your hands on thousands of rounds or thousands of guns or anything like that um, a lot of people have asked me about that yes you should be concerned with your own self-defense and being out at night and maybe you have a lot of money on you or maybe you have resources that makes you a prime target and you should be concerned with that but i would say my top five okay coach brought up food I would definitely suggest food and water being one and two, okay? Food, water, shelter would be your first three. You have to have some semblance of home. And if you don't have a place to stay or you don't have somewhere to go, whether it's the sense of community that coach brought up, whether it's reaching out to a coach, whether it's reaching out to somebody that's a leader in the community to get some type of support or get a bed or get a place to stay, reach out and make that happen. Um, but those three things are gonna always be paramount. Beyond that, maintaining good protocols, I would say is the fourth thing. You have to make sure you're washing your clothes, you're washing yourself, you have maintaining regular hygiene habits. This is a virus and it gets transferred through touching. And I know everybody brings up social distancing and all that stuff, but we're not here hugging and touching on each other. It's, you know, it's one of those things that you have to make sure you understand what the, the passage is of the virus and understand how that, that can happen and how to take care of yourself. Where I'm not a high risk person per se. Now, with that being said, I'm still maintaining very strong hygiene protocols. So I would say that would be fourth. Beyond that, self-defense becomes the next thing. This is not a virus into everybody in the jiu-jitsu community that uh, um, you have to feel you have to take it up to the next level unless you own a business first, you have something to protect, your family, your daughter, everything else, or you're one of those high value people that may maintain uh, a lot of resources. So if you own a business that potentially has a lot of money, a lot of food, um, as we said, maybe potentially down the line mats, uh, those to me would be my top five. If you choose to go get a firearm or ammunition to ratchet it up to that level of self-defense, which goes beyond jujitsu and, and mixed martial arts, then by all means, go do it. I'm a huge supporter of the Second Amendment. Go do it. You know, self-defense should be number one, but I don't think you need to go buy thousands of rounds of ammunition tomorrow. I said to somebody the other day, if you had 200 rounds and you shot them all and you, and, and you killed people, th that would make you one of the deadliest people in human history. I think you'll be fine. I, yeah. You don't need all that. But at the end of the day, be prepared the next time this comes around. And to me, there's no excuse and no reason why you can't have at least 30 days worth of food, a small amount of ammunition potentially for hunting and protecting yourself or your business first. But those would be my top five. I, I think those are, I would be in line with that too. And I would, I would actually add a, a, like a different look at being prepared, you know? So like when a tragedy happens, like you touched on the personal hygiene and good protocols, you know, I'm telling everybody now because shit's just different. Mm -hmm. It's just different now. And so people are at home struggling with depression and mental health issues. And if you're not doing anything, you're falling apart. So I say set your alarm for 7 a.m. Oh, even yeah. if you have nowhere to go, get up, clean out your closet, 
organize your house, treat it like a full-time job. Like I'm working, but I'm working for me. I love that. And there's nothing better to build your self-esteem than to sit back at the end of the day and go, just sit in the garage and go, man, my garage is dope. It's perfect right now. And Home Depot's still open. Mm -hmm. If you got a little bit of cash, you can go buy a little bit of stuff to improve or just organize, just organize and donate. And then if you donate, donating also makes you feel good because there's people out there that are struggling right now. A lot of people in Vegas have lost their jobs because the casino's closed. You know, and so donating, organizing, but the most important thing is, is to set up a protocol, a, a regimen. You know, you're getting up in the morning and you're still working eight hours a day. But it's just cool because you're doing it on your own. And then on the simultaneously, you're also positioning yourself to be more effective when this goes over. So I do agree. Food, water, shelter, um, uh, protocol, staying clean. And then also having uh, guns and ammunition, at least on a certain, you know, whatever level. Minimum a hunting level. Yeah. You know, if you, have to, if you have to eventually hunt to get food. But at a maximum, I would start with, if you're a business owner, then yeah, it has a priority. Looting is real. Yep. Um, it can happen. Now, the reality coach is a lot of people will listen to this and not necessarily follow it, even if you put the videos out there. What do we say to everybody that's just going to slip into that? almost depressive state, you know, and they're trying to battle out of it. I know my phone's on, I know coaches is, you have to maintain those routines. And one point to go back to come forward, coach brought up an awesome one. You know, take it one room at a time. You have at least two weeks, okay? They mentioned a 15 day mandate of how they're trying to dull this curve. Take it one room at a time, start in your bedroom, clean your and organize your bedroom. You know, do your laundry, do the daddy do's, you know, like you said. Do each space. Even if you have an apartment, it's it's a great time to go through the bins, go through stuff, organize it, put your house in order. I've been doing that. I organized, I was showing these guys pictures. I organized my whole truck. I organized my whole garage. I was organizing everything. Go to, a, you know, go in and organize a friend's house next door just for, for grins. But there's, there's a lot of people. And then there's also the elderly community or the older community out game. there, which if you have an elder neighbor or you know someone... There was a woman across the street from my girlfriend's house I mentioned to somebody. I said, uh, uh, I was just talking to her because she just wanted someone to talk to. She just wanted someone to say hi to. She didn't have anyone checking on her. I said, hey, everything good over there? Yeah. You know, how you doing? Good. You know, all right. Hey, if you need something, yell out. They just want to hear that, you know, so that if you live in a community or even an apartment complex where you have that, reach out to them. Just say hi. Just give them a wave when they're pulling in the, the garage. Let them know you're there. Give them some awareness, you know, mm -hmm. and that goes a long way. If you haven't done that, even if you don't know the people, a wave from a distance, hey, you good? You know, yep. And that goes for miles. And getting in routines, like Coach said, a lot of people have said this online and even in the news, write out your routine. Coach said get up at 7. Get up at 7. Don't be a couch potato. Don't become someone that just sits on the couch. Have that basic routine down. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy the time off and you can't use it as a time to recover and rest. Because I know he gets a million text messages about people bitching about injuries. Now is a great time to heal those injuries. Everybody should be ready to come back 110%. So now's a good time to maybe, you know, get those, those bugs, those nagging injuries taken care of and healed. And I, you know, I joke a little bit because... It's we're always leaning on our coaches and our leaders in our communities and you're getting inundated with messages. Be patient. You know, coaches trying to get back to everybody. I know I'm trying to get back to everybody. We're all trying to work through it together, as you mentioned, but you don't have to have a panic button. Everybody will be there. And sometimes if it's that extreme, picking up the phone and making it a call and not a text goes a long way, it goes for miles. Um, it's going to be, you know, a long two weeks at the very least. Sure how we pull through it as a, as a team first, as a community, is gonna say everything. And it starts with your team, you know, your immediate circle. Don't worry so much about the community as a whole. There'll be businesses, as Coach said, that might close down, businesses that may stay open. We're gonna go through those motions, but we'll all pull through it together as a group. And if you need someone to reach out to, or you need someone to talk to, or you need somebody to lean on, I know we're all here, including you, because you've been huge about that and very outspoken. If you needed food and you were part of the 10th Planet family, if you need anything, um, Coach is doing the best he can to get back to everybody. He's got a million unread messages. He's doing everything in his power. To those that are sitting at home, as I said, coming forward now, that are being the couch potatoes, 
what advice would you give them in the immediate run? Is it pick up the phone and call you, pick up the phone and call EG, myself, any, you know, what, what advice? Yeah, I mean, immediately, the, the best way to get out of a funk is just to start making positive movements. Even before calling somebody, just get up and do something. Take Quit. a shower, put good Wash clothes Wash your dishes, yeah. do something, just something easy. And then reach out to somebody who can support you. That's the other thing. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm willing to help anyone. All you got to do is ask. But you have to be willing to help yourself too. Like I, there, I don't have enough calories in, or time in the day to be out earning for a capable body. I can't do that. But if you want to go and get it with me, I'll be willing to go do that. And there's nothing I won't do. You know, you're especially if you're one of my students and especially, you know, if you're a family member or a friend, you know, if you call me and it's just like, hey, I need to move this freezer from point A to point B because I want to put some meat in it. You call me. I don't give a shit what I got going on. I'm coming. Like, you need me to help you move it? Let's do it. And there's a lot of us in the community, you know, but one of the, one of the things that's going to be difficult in these times when things shut down is capable humans are not going to want to carry the weight for capable humans. So you got to always keep that in, in perspective, you know? So if you're, if you're healthy and able, people that are healthy and able are not going to want to help if you're not doing anything. Now, it's, it's a virus that has obviously been all over the news. It came from China. Um, that's what the president, you know, has been saying from the beginning. Kung flu. Kung flu. Now, is there any conspiracy theories? Oh, my God. Um, yeah, there's some crazy ones. And, you know, I, I am... So, like, everybody thinks I'm super active on social media. Oh, dude, you're posting all the time. You're making all this content. But I don't scroll social media. Right, right. You know, I usually just post on it. And if you tag me, I'll respond. But even then, when people tag me, they're like, Coach, you never even respond. It's just because I'm always so busy. I don't have time to really do that. I'm, I'm generating content to reach my students. But in general, I'm not surfing. So, but some of this shit is just really crazy and it catches my attention. And I, I got to just start with this. I don't believe it. Deep state, pedophile arrests and all that stuff. But it is entertaining because for me, it's just like a, a Dean Koontz, Koontz book. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Literally. It, like, yeah. It's, it's, it's got Michael Crichton written all over it. Oh, but yeah, it's, for sure. But it's, you know, to everybody out there that's, you know, chiming in on the conspiracy theories or thinks that... You know, there's some type of deep state thing. It's a population control. It's a this, it's a that. I know firsthand they are working diligently on a cure. And they're saying that the cure could come any day. Now, the issue isn't that they'll get a cure. The issue isn't that you can get the help. The issue is that they don't want a thousand people showing up to the hospital tomorrow looking for ventilators and looking for equipment. So to everybody out there that prescribes to the conspiracy theory, look, HIV and AIDS was a pretty big big epidemic okay and it didn't really reach air cover until really the late 80s in the way that it brought awareness to it and it took some major celebrities getting it um you know it, it's it's one of those things now we just had a question come in somebody asked i'm a teacher and we are in a shutdown and for four weeks and my students call me every 20 minutes of the day and that's true that's that's one of the things coach is talking about you know, people are going to reach out. And the reason we're bringing up all these topics is we want to get them out to the students. So we're kind of answering and, you know, thwarting a lot of those questions before they come. Um, he's going to do his best to process all of those questions, just as I am. If anyone has any questions about firearms, guns, whether it's hunting or whatever they think they need, you're going to do your best to get back to all those questions. You're only one person and you have a family and other responsibilities, but it doesn't make it any less important. You're still a priority. And, you know, to everybody out there that's going to, be in the bed and be the couch potato and be in the conspiracy theory space. Don't spend a ton of, ton of time on the internet. Mm -hmm. That's going to be my suggestion first. Don't troll around and look for the internet for the answers because you're going to get something new every day. And not, not only that, but just feeling like there's some nefarious thing going on. That doesn't do... If you start believing in that stuff, then it's just gloom, doom and gloom. And, and there's no positive... Like, look, who knows where the virus came from? Did it come from a lab? Is this something that they were trying to figure out a cure for something else? Who knows? Who knows? Like, I, that's not, I just know that it's here now, and I know that we're dealing with it. And, you know, this, all these conspiracy things, they're pretty funny to me, but people are taking them seriously, 
And those guys are the ones that think that there's there's no hope anymore because it's like someone way bigger than them is controlling all this. The population control one was the most interesting to me because of the cost of Social Security and everything as, as folks age. And this uh -huh. really targets an aging population. Now, to that I say this. They wouldn't go out and spend $1 trillion to find the solution because it's going to cost more for the solution than it would be to, to fix the problem, you know. Not only that, but I have about 20 employees and I want those 20 employees to send out 10 emails a day and I can't get that done. So if this was a global conspiracy, how in the world would somebody not say something? Right. You know what I mean? Like I can't even get five people to do what I want them to do. And, and you know, the teacher followed up with another question. So she has a student there daily to help them, you know, around the house and do stuff. There is stuff like that going on here. Coach has one or two guys just kind of helping around the gym. So if you're looking to be put to work, you're not going to have to look far. You know, uh, go ahead and, and reach out to someone, as I mentioned earlier. And even maybe coach has something for you to do one day. Oh, if your personal life and, and your house is so airtight that you have no work there. No outlet. I'll, I'll find somebody <laughs> that needs help. Like we, we have plenty of students that are, that are children, you know, three years old. And I'm sure that their parents, some of them are elderly, some of them are a little bit older. I'm sure they can use some help. You know, everybody can use some help. So if you if you guys out there need need work, we'll definitely put you to work for well, sure. What was interesting, coach, is they were still keeping preschools and stuff open um, up until what was it just recently? I feel were, like they they announced that they some essential preschools were going to remain open. Yeah. So they were still doing that, which begs the question, you know, do you have the young ones here on the mat? You know, it's kind of an interesting one, and I know some gyms. We're considering that, but that's kind of a an oddball one because it doesn't necessarily fall under a school per se. And they were keeping some of the daycares open. When when they uh, at first when when um, they closed, I think it was Sunday. They closed the the school districts down at night, and so I know that a lot of people were out of jobs. Right that that night on Sunday when they mm. decided to close uh, CCSD down, and then they closed down some casinos. And so I know that a lot of our students now, like the parents didn't have An any, any babysitting contingencies, you know, because they gave us an email at six o'clock on Saturday night because I have kids in CCSD too. So I get the email six o'clock on Saturday night, we're going to remain open. And then nine o'clock on Sunday night, I got an email saying they're, gr they're going to close. So immediately what I did is I reached out to my parents here and I said, I'm going to be in the gym from uh, 9 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. And if you guys don't have daycare and you can't take the day off, bring your kids in and we'll, we'll still- We'll make it work. We'll do the social distancing. I was just thinking we'll spread them out on the mats. And I got a TV here, we'll put on Netflix and we'll just let the kids hang out and we'll do some things. And I reached out to all the parents. Nobody actually took me up on that, but that's one of those community things. Like we all have to do that. Yeah, period. and in the short run, Everyone's going to do what's best for their family. You know, it's just nice to hear the offer. Hey, guys, look, you know, if you need this. I think down the line as time goes on, if you resuggest that in a week or two, as things kind of start to slowly dissipate, you may have some people take you up on it. Because I was going to mention that. That's a great strategy of just having, you know, you have plenty of room here. Have 10 feet apart from each student and say, look, we're going to maintain all kinds of distance. We'll have the, the we'll put a movie on, like you said. And everyone can just kind of veg out and just kind of chill for an hour or two to give everyone a break. I think some people will take you up on that yeah, as time marches and, on. And they should. You know, CCSD closed down. I have two seniors in high school. I have labor now. Mm -hmm. Like when it closed down, it actually gave me mm -hmm. power because now I've got teenagers that are capable. They can lift. They're both really good wrestlers. And I was like, okay, you guys are running the daycare. That's yeah. how this is going down. And, and, and one of the teachers just chimed in. That's a great idea. I have a few teachers on this live. So I think that's a phenomenal idea down the line. I think if they announce that there's a cure, I think you'll see a lot of people jump on that right away. Like, hey, we're still going to maintain this. Now, to everybody listening to, this is Coach and, and his decision to follow the guidelines and the protocols put forward. It's, it's a mandated – It's not a. It, they, they're not going to enforce it by any code of law. But it's a closure. And, and as things slowly ramp up and you'll decide when that is, as you slowly start to bring things back, 
I think we'll find that you'll put in those programs and layer them in as they come, as stuff starts to come back into the fold. And I think something like that might be the first layer, along with privates, as we mentioned earlier. For sure. I am by no means a conspiracy theorist, right? We all know a lot of 10th Planet guys are, and I support them and love them. They're great dudes. Half of that's trolling. Half of that is just kind of like suggesting that it's a possible thing, right? But by no means am I a conspiracy theorist, but I am also not with the media and like, especially with vaccinations, I don't believe in, in the schedule. I believe in vaccinations and, and we can get some of them, but I don't believe that my kid at three months old should get 27 vaccinations. You know what I mean? Like I, I think the schedule needs to be less and it needs to be slowed down. But I do know that the CDC has like big pharma revolving through the CDC. So there are some things, right? But it's not conspiracy stuff, it's just data. And so for me, I am going to operate based on the president's recommendations, based on the government governor's recommendations, and those are usually coming from the CDC. Mm -hmm. So for sure, I'm gonna adhere to those guidelines because at the end of the day, I don't have access to all the data. I get whatever gets filtered to me, right? So I just think I'm gonna err on the caution of safety. I love my students more than anything, and it's my civic responsibility to take care of the elderly in our community. So for me, I'm not gonna be opening up until we're ready to open up. We could do some stuff with young adults that are living alone and they don't have high risk uh, people living with them. We could do private lessons. Like I've got coaches in here that can do privates, they can do one-on-one -on -one trainings. But and, and a lot of coaches have mentioned doing privates. That's not something that's a but secret, I, yeah. But I'm taking it a step further. If you're, if you're 19 years old, and you live with your mom and dad, and your mom and dad are taking care of their mom and dad, we're not bringing you in here. That's just the way it's gonna work. And it's because I, there's no way I can have on my conscience, someone came in here, got coronavirus, and then went home and one of their elderly died. I just can't have it. No. I'm, not, I'm not gonna, I'm not willing to. And I would rather go out of business before that happened. So there'll be a screening process in terms of who, there, who's sure. eligible and who, who can come in. So this is a wild, this is a crazy time. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun getting to catch up and, and rap with somebody like Coach, but at the same time, under these circumstances, it's not ideal, it's not what we want. But to everybody out there, you have a community. You have people willing to listen. You have people willing to communicate with you. If you're listening to this or Coach shares this or this is put out there on the different channels, reach out to one of us. Shoot a DM, shoot a message, Coach has his phone on. He's going to do the best he can to get back to you, but don't hesitate to get in touch with someone if you're just kind of lost in the mix for sure, for and sure. you don't know what to do and you're like, hey, man, I boiled up my last bowl of noodles or whatever, or I don't even know where to get food, or my car doesn't work, reach out. It doesn't always have to be Coach either. There's myself, there's AG, there's other people. There's always people willing to step in and help, and especially to the immediate 10th Planet family, the guys right here in this community, in the Henderson and downtown community, you have a lot of guys that may may not be your black belts, but they're cornerstone dudes that'll jump in and, or, or ladies that'll jump in and help you. Reach out to them. Don't hesitate to call them. What other f words do you have or final words, Coach, for the students and for everybody listening? Uh, just to reiterate, again, stay productive. Think of positioning. Positioning is key, right? So... I'm gonna put it in terms that, that are just easier so we could take it off the coronavirus and what we're going through now. Let's just talk about like a, like a major life event, like a divorce, right? You go through a divorce, you're gonna go into a state of depression and you could either end up, no matter what, you're gonna wake up one morning and you're gonna be over that. You're just gonna feel better. Time heals all wounds, including love. And so like, Let's say you go against something that's out of your control. We'll just use divorce for this example. Eventually, you're going to be good. What kind of position are you going to be in when you're good again? Are you going to be in bankruptcy? You lost your house. You lost your job. Or are you going to take the unfortunate event that's delivered to you out of your control and you're going to decide to be positive and you're going to put yourself in a good position? Mm. So, you know, everyone's talking about the coronavirus. Let's just put it in a different term. So... We're, we, we're met up against this life event that we have no control over. Are you gonna go down? Or are you gonna use this trajectory to put you on the path that you've always wanted to be? Is it gonna springboard you into the future? Or is it gonna destroy you? 
So keep that in mind when you're, when you're deciding what you're gonna do during the day. Keep that in mind. Can I tell them about our project? Go ahead. I'm really excited about this. Like, but this is probably one of the most exciting things and John and I are gonna do a YouTube documentary series on this. So as soon as this blows over, cause right now, you know, you gotta think of this now, we're in the middle of the freezing ocean off the coast of Alaska and everybody is hypothermic. So all the stuff on the periphery, our blood is coming to the core. And we're it's doing just, triage. Yeah, right we're doing, yeah, so we're just, we're protecting our core. But he and I are still thinking of things to do. So one of the things we've been talking a lot, months before this happened, John and I were talking about guns and ammo and, and tactical stuff and being ready. And I was like, oh, dude, I want to do it. I want to do it, man. And he kept going, just call me. Just call me. I'm, this is what I do for a living. It would be like if he was calling me and say, let's do jiu-jitsu. And I'm like, bro, I'm in, the, fool. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the gym three times a day. Like, come on, let's do jiu-jitsu. And he's like, yeah, 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 I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I kind of treated it that same way. And now all of a sudden, I'm kicking myself in the ass a little bit. I'm prepared, but I'm not prepared. And so we're going to do, we're gonna do a, a YouTube series where we're going to have a war room. John and I are going to sit <laughs> down with a whiteboard, and we're going to go over it, and we're going to say, okay, if we need the perfect amount and why, then we're gonna just start building it out and you're gonna watch me do it at my house and we're gonna go through the steps of actually like coming up with a plan, what do we need and why, and then we're gonna do an actual build out where uh, I think he's got some stuff going on simultaneously that might be able to be involved in this, but like we're gonna build out my closet like a gun safe and we're gonna start building up just, you know, 60 to 90 days of supplies and we're gonna go through this whole process of getting me ready. And prepping is a fun, people talk, the prepper community is an interesting one. I've been around it my whole life. Prepping is a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. And you can prep in many different ways. You can prep mentally, you can prep prep with, with the actual physical product. But prepping and doing this stuff can be a really fun project. It's almost like a, a puzzle for adults in some ways. So I have a lot of fun when I do it, whether it's you're putting together a go bag or whatever it is. A lot of guys that do that in the DIY community, they do it almost more like a fun project. They hope to never use it, but it's there and it's fun. And to everybody out there, I said this to Coach a while back. We were talking and we were going back and forth. And I said, you know, if something ever happens, I'd rather have ammo than money because it's worth more. And to everybody in my community, they know what that means when I say that. Because right now my phone has stopped. Now I've been nonstop with people looking for ammunition or looking for something. And that's part of the the mentality of the guys in a lot of my sphere. You know, I got phone calls from so many good friends that are like, what do you have? What do you stockpile? What do you have access to? To me, the best way to look at it is because literally this is the pickle that people are going to get put in. John Bartolo's got... Uh, 10 crates of eggs, right? And I go over there and I say, John, I've got a hundred bucks, let me get some of them eggs. That hundred dollars doesn't mean shit, but if I walk in there with a, with a couple boxes of ammunition and I'm like, hey, let me trade you this, this uh, 100 rounds of nine millimeter for 24 of those eggs. It's gold, it's instantly you know, gold. I, I mean, it's even more than gold. Gold don't mean shit either, okay? Mm -hmm. Defend yourself with a bar of gold, go ahead. What yeah, I had, a, I had a friend say to me, oh, I'm gonna go to the bank and take a thousand bucks out, I go, they're like, aren't you? I'm like, have you seen my stockpiles off a thousand dollars in an hour? I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm not worried about it. So, you know, to, and, and listen, that doesn't diminish anyone else's plan to anyone out there. You know, this project coach and I will do when we, when we come out of this, it's going to be a fun project. We're going to get a lot of great brands involved. We'll do, we'll have a lot of fun doing it. And I know, you know, for a lot of people out there that wonder the why, everybody's why is gonna be different in how they prep. Everybody does things mission specific based on where they live, the topography, everything else, and how they approach yep. the things that they do. So some people might be like, you know, geez, I'm not a hunter. Your prepping might be canned goods, might be something that you store in your home. So the different levels of prepping go uh, uh, all different ways. You might be on a coastline where fishing is huge, so you might have a lot of fishing stuff. And then people say, well, shouldn't you have a little of everything? Some people don't have the means to have everything, to have all those resources. And even to expand on that, you need to be a savage physically too. Yeah. Like like the guns and the knives and the rounds and you the You gotta food, train on it. That's all great, I, but I, if you're you know, type two diabetic and 400 pounds, I talked about it's not this, gonna help. I talked about this a lot on the, the Jiu Jitsu podcast. We were talking about it with Chewy, you know, and I, I talked about, I've talked about it with you. Mixed martial arts are great, 
shooting and training and other training is also a version of mixed martial arts. So you have to incorporate yeah, all those different things. And that's something I've been a huge proponent of and very vocal about. Um, you have to incorporate it all. I have good friends like, like Ruben Alvarez and Tony Sentman out at Real World Tactical. They incorporate a lot of those things in their training and how they train. So you have to bring a lot of those things together and you have to have the ability to bring all those things together. And you know, it's something I'd, I've said for a long time, I'd love to see here. I'd love to see more real world jujitsu. And Absolutely. I talked about that even with, um, with, a, with a jujitsu when we were talking you know, with Nick, I, you know, about sometimes introducing different things, whether it's training blades or other things. So when you're training at home and you're preparing for the worst, the apocalypse, the zombie invasion, <laughs> prepare for all of it. And this is a good time to kind of reevaluate your training scheme what you're doing, what you yep. put out there, just as an individual. And, and your situational awareness is huge right now. And this is something we don't talk about enough on the mats and everything else. You know, you talk a lot about, you know, understanding where you are and how strong you really are and what you're capable of. But I think situational awareness is something people should really start to ratchet up and understand, have those little fibers, that little spidey sense start to go off and understand when they're in a bad situation and when they're in a, in a good situation. Man, this Corona rock, it came and it just hit us. Bang! And it changed my trajectory so much now. I cannot wait. I am chomping at the bit. I can't, man. I'm so excited for the for the the new me that's gonna come out of this. Uh, I've done a lot of things. I don't want to get into the business moves that I've made during all of this. But I am gonna be so singularly focused on just crushing everything every single day. And I mean, I've always been. You know me. I'm a real focused guy, really disciplined guy. But uh, my my focus was a little bit broader and now I'm getting really narrow and I'm really excited to take this journey with you and just kind of become more, if you're looking at like this tactical world as like a language, I cannot wait to become more articulate and trained and versed and I definitely am going to start to incorporate these kind of things in our training modules and our methodology because I believe well-rounded is important. You know, you want to you wanna be able to make it if the worst case scenario ever happened, you want to make it to the end of the ammunition. It's all gone now. And then you want to have the martial arts that can carry you through all of that stuff. Like that's kind of the idea, you know? And uh, so you got to be a savage physically, but you also have to be prepared. And man, I'm really looking forward to and it. And if anyone out there is looking for more information on how to even form a plan if all of this is going like this right now because I know me, Coach, AG, all of us are in a bubble and we kind of like are all speaking a different language. If it goes like this, well, you just don't hesitate to reach out. You know, yeah, I love sure. sitting and chewing the fat on this stuff and giving ideas. Um, don't hesitate to reach out. I mean, I might be a little over the top for some, but... You know, I'll but that's why we're that's yeah, why we're so good together, fun, right? Yeah, I'll have a lot of fun talking about it and giving you ideas and giving different things you can do. But uh, coach, I can't thank you enough. Man, it's been amazing. Thank you. We're gonna brother. pass Corona to each other oh, right man. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, bro. We're gonna wash after this for the record. But I appreciate everybody out there, and I appreciate uh, everyone taking the time. Reach out to coach. Reach out to me. Reach out to AG. Reach out to the different channels. Yeah. Don't hesitate to ask. I'm gonna put this out there, and all the students out there, you have some rocks to lean on. It's not just coach. You have different guys. So don't hesitate to give us all a, a shout and uh, stay out of the the bullshit. Didn't you say I'm your first repeat guest? Yeah. Big announcement. Coach Casey is my first repeat guest that I had both audio and visually uh, on. So it's a huge benchmark for me. I wanted to go about 200 episodes before I had a repeat. But given the circumstances, this was the right call. So I can't thank Coach enough and thank everyone at 10th Planet because we're out, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate I appreciate you. It. So we're out, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Love you guys. Amazing. Good job, 54 dude. minutes. Felt Perfect. Like five. I know these guys probably like, God damn, hurry up. <laughs> Bro, we could do a video series and sell it to Discovery. Bro, it's going to be so fun. After this, there'll be a lot of that. I cannot wait. I cannot wait, dude. You you have the connections too. Like you want to keep those? I don't have 3.5. Yeah. Keep them. Thanks. I just had them in my pocket. I don't even fucking know why. I was like, I might need these. Bro, we're going we're gonna to fucking... Here. That, hey, do you think that's a good idea, AG? Yep. I think doing, it'd be fun. It's doing fun. Like, a, like you're like, hey, I got this guy. He's only shot like 10 rounds in his entire life. Like we're going to get him. Well, what's good about it is when I do the warehouse, I'll have access to all the dudes and it'll work out really well, actually. I'll have access to the dudes to Fuck do it. Yeah. Like at the time. I'm just giving two seconds of thought to it. It could be a whole fucking 
like different certification level. Being able to oh yeah run into a room, tackle a guy, fucking fight him with clothes on because guys don't know how to fucking manipulate well, I was, clothes. I was telling John like even a while back, I'm like, I want you to take me to the range and and like I, I want to become a black belt in shooting. I'm a huge, huge fan of mixed martial arts, but one out of the quiver like anything else. No, for sure. There are right. guys who are fucking insanely good preppers. And AG, I know you know what I'm talking about. Like, prepping's like their life. They're like absolutely insane. But they can't punch or shoot a gun.